This week's episode of the Wild Card Podcast is brought to you by Gotcha, April Fools! Seriously, Jared? You're such a dick. Nailed it! Speak. Welcome to the Wild Card Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Eaton, and my co-pilots on this journey to wherever are my good friends, Jeff Curtis. Hello. And the man who knows exactly how many licks it takes to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of anything, Ron Blair. <laughs> yeah, I do. How many to get to the center of an ostrich? Uh, just the right amount. Oh, all right. There oh, you go. yeah. Well, speaking of just the right amount... Uh, and the ostrich will thank me. <laughs> I have no doubt. Oh, and yes. it'll put $5 on the uh, top on of the, the dresser. On the dresser. Every other Every day. Every other Every other Ostrich day eggs instead yeah. of... Like, that's that's my day. So how many licks does it take to get Touch Roll Sim this podcast? There's only one man who can tell us that. It's Ron Blair. Ron Blair is here to tell you exactly what this podcast is all about. Replacing Ron Blair. Get out of my chair! What was that? Was that... Yeah. Was that a different Blair? That was my son, Caleb. Oh, my God. It was Making Blair. his wild yeah. card <laughs> It's so hard. Uh, debut. As long as there's a Blair in that seat, I feel like we're good to go. So, yeah, um, it could know. be any of the yeah. three that are sitting here right now. Yeah, there are a, there a are Blair a, or a Drake. There's, there's a, or, a Drake. Ooh, or a Drake. No. There's a horde of Blairs. There's a horde of Blairs here. <laughs> there's a horde of Blairs. Three quarters of my family is in this room right now. Yeah. There's and they're leaving. Blairs. There's more Blairs in my house than Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true, <laughs> isn't it? All right, I love you. I so, love you too. I love so you. So Blairs are leaving now, so we can. So we can right. Right. Now we can go crazy. <laughs> Special guest children. Now we can go crazy Mind. with our podcast. Oh, oh, oh yeah, now we can get really yeah. inappropriate. Yeah. We're just so professional. Yeah. Talk yeah. about That's what boobs we're all about and cunnilingus and we're stuff. We're all about ah. professionalism. So um, I was putting together the favorites question for this week, and I had one, and then we got to Monday of this week, and I completely switched because Monday of this week I did my taxes. Oh. And it wasn't something I'd plan on doing. I'm like, I, but I'm like, well, I can't really put it off any longer. I kind of right, have to do that. So I did it Monday, and I'll be honest, like I set up my paycheck in a way where I get a good refund check. Yeah, like, I have yeah. them take the money out up front. You so do when, the zero. Yeah. So when the season yeah. comes around, I know I'm going to get money back. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to get a pretty good check. Good. It's going to take care of some stuff for me. But it made me think, man. Even though I know I'm getting money back, yeah, I hate doing my taxes. Yeah, absolutely. Hate yeah, it. it's, I, it's, I, I, I don't do them. Okay. It's a pain in the ass. My you wife does them. Oh, no, she does TurboTax. Okay. We used to I, go to Jackson I, I Hewitt. Online. I do online. We used to do a Jackson Hewitt until they exponentially continued to charge loyal to, customers year yeah. after year, charging them more. I went to H and R Block and it was like three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. three hundred dollars. Yeah, I, I used to do that and then I stopped so, when my taxes got less complicated. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, that's what, that's I don't have any write offs. Shit. I did mine online and it cost less than a hundred. Yes. And I even, I even like, cause there was, there's a, the way they could do it is like, listen, we can take our fee out of what you're getting paid back, but that's an extra $40. Yeah. Like, I'm like, no, I'll just pay you. Yeah. yeah. They nickel and dime you to death yeah. for something that you can do for free online. Yeah. Well, so. I, I did H and R block online, but it's only 40 bucks as opposed wow. to going in. That's not bad at all. Yeah. No, 40 bucks isn't bad at all. But it, the, so the, it brings us to what is your least favorite part of being an adult? Oh, because because that's one of those things. Like my kids, my kids in school are like, "Why do I have to learn all this stuff? Why can't I learn things like how to do taxes and like how to write a check?" And like, well, <laughs> all that all, fun stuff, almost, like taxes well, and well, well, their, their question is like, "Why don't I learn things that I'll actually need to know as right, an adult?" Right. So you know, well, I, honestly, I'm surprised that why isn't driver's ed a class students are required to take in high school? Or I feel like, that it should be. Like, because, you know, so many people don't know, they're like cramming this stuff in their head online and they're right. reading books trying to memorize the answers to questions so they can pass their test. But it feels like that's the kind of skill you want kids yeah. to have. Yeah, well, they're, uh, kids are good at puking information. That's yeah. what we've taught them to do for 12 years. Mm -hmm. They can vomit but information. But we don't always give them the skills they'll need as adults. So I kind of just want right. to know, like, as, as adults... Even though we rarely act like them. Well, Jeff, right. often than us. Yeah, yeah, Jeff acts yeah, like them. He usually acts like an adult. He's the voice of reason. Um, I am the voice of reason. Yeah. Uh, so, what, <laughs> what are things you like. You would be savages. <laughs> Jared has a voice. Burning the city. I do city have a voice down. too. So <laughs> he would be what are some trying to stop me from like, burning down the man, city. Man, I really hate this part of being an adult. Garbage. Taking the garbage out. Really? I really. I, that's not my the thing I hate okay. the most, but god damn, I hate taking the garbage. I hate to interrupt you again, but. I think I may have told you this the other day. So I live in like a little cul-de-sac in a bunch of condos. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there's some people rent the condo and I own mine. I purchased mine. Yeah. So I own it. And we have a dumpster at the end of the cul-de-sac. <laughs> oh, and yeah. And it's pretty far away from where I live. Like I live on one end. It's at the very other end of the street. Uh, and it's not it, a big deal. It's like yeah. a block away. It's, it's, I've been there. It's, it's a block it's, it's, away. It's a good little walk, but yeah. whatever. I, I live with it. It's, 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 right. it. it's fine. But then like two weeks ago, I come home from work 
and there's two sides of the road, obviously. And the side I live on, normal, the other side, they all have big brown trash cans. Yeah. That they were bins, brought out yeah. bin. They were brought out brought out to them by I think it was what, Rumpke or whatever. Yeah. They've got their bins. That's how the road got them. Our side didn't. So <laughs> like what kind of horse We've got a that? dumpster. And I, I, I'm used to it, but why do they not have to use it anymore? Like, if I could have this giant yeah. trash can, I could put my trash bags in, pull it up to the curb, that'd be great. But I don't know why I didn't is get there, one. Well, let me ask you this. Is there enough room for for trash cans on both sides of the road and the trash truck to get through? I, I mean, yeah. Is it, there's a circle at the end. It can turn around. Like, yeah. okay. it's always had to come pick up, clean up the dumpster yeah, anyway. It's, it's I, try, I tried to find there's a logical reason. There's probably a logical that. reason. I don't understand <laughs> I don't know either. what it is. Like, so for me, like, I get it. Like, I hate taking trash out. Yeah. But, yeah. like... It's so much worse walking down to the dumpster seeing their trash cans on the oh, side. Oh, I bet it is. It's like, fuck yeah. bitches. Because yeah, I live by myself, I, so I don't actually generate that much trash. I only right. take my trash out once a week, and I get one bag. And usually if I have one bag of trash, I throw it in the garage until I have a couple bags. Then I'll walk it down to the – or drive it down to the dumpster. For some reason, in one week, my family generates, like, the garbage that a Brooklyn orphanage <laughs> okay. would. Like, I don't know how this happens uh, because we're never home. We're always at the theater or doing something. Mm -hmm. But that probably actually generates yeah. more garbage because you're eating more packaged yeah. stuff. You're oh, out that more. is true. You don't, yeah. That is eating true. out more, so you're getting more and more of the garbage. Yeah. So, Jeff, what, about, what do you think? I hate cleaning. Yeah. And I I'm hate cleaning the man. bathroom. Top I hate to cleaning bottom. the house. I, I do it because, you know, it's... It's someone's got to do it, and I it's I so it's my responsibility to do my yeah. parts of it, and so I do it. But you know, nobody likes. I mean, there may be people who like cleaning, but I hate yeah. cleaning the house. There are some things I don't mind doing. I'll <laughs> yeah. be honest, I don't mind cleaning a bathroom. If there's one thing I don't mind cleaning, it's a bathroom because when the bathroom looks nice, I feel better. Oh, yeah, but they're like right. vacuuming. I don't like vacuuming. I well, don't mind vacuuming. I can vacuum it, and I can the, sweep. I don't mind sweeping yeah, either. The thing I hate the most is lo is lawn work. Yeah. It's like shaving. Oh, it's the thing. It's like, it's like shaving, and I have to do it again next week. And it's just like I have to do it, or it's going to get worse. Yeah. But it's not like going to last. That's yeah. so frustrating. Yeah. Well, I I won't dust. I hate dusting. Joe knows that if she wants the house dust, <laughs> she has to dust, or yeah. Madeline has to dust. Because you know the thing I hate about dusting is you have to move all the. If you're actually going to do a good job, yeah. you have to actually right. move everything in your fucking house. Oh yeah. Dust. Back. And yeah. I'm, I'm not everything. willing to do that. And I when I lived in um, Pennsylvania. Uh, I had a small yard and I had a small, so I had a push lawnmower that broke down and, and it was electric and it broke down just before I moved. So I only had to find ways <laughs> to mow my lawn a couple times. Yeah. Right. When I moved out here and we rented this house, which has half an acre of lawn, yeah. then there's no way of push. So, you know, my way of dealing with the, that was to hire a guy to come out and, That's what I did and do it every couple of weeks. Yeah. And he's been doing it, but he informed me at the end of the last season that he, um, isn't going to do it anymore. So this year oh, I'm going to no. have to find me a new uh, lawn guy, which I'm not looking forward to doing because, yeah. you know, it, the only thing worse than doing it myself is, or the only thing, it's less, it'd be worse for me to do it myself, but now I have to actually, you know, find somebody to yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't, I, I miss using a push mower. Nope. I miss mowing the lawn with a push mower. I had to mow in Mee County, and now I don't have much of a lawn anymore, and it gets cut for me, and it is glorious. Well, where I used to live didn't have much of a lawn, so it was nice. Yeah, I could go sense. out there for like an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, push the mower around, the grass was cut, looked nice. A day like today, I'd be cool with cutting the grass. Yeah, it'd be great. But then it's the middle of the summer, no, and, and it's, it's so hot. It's 98 degrees outside. And there's no... Uh, <laughs> there was, to keep himself and grass busy... Cl clippings stick to your legs and yeah. sweat and To bugs. keep himself busy, and because I don't have a riding mower, my, my dad actually enjoys coming to mow my lawn. Wow. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Now, there was a time when he was ill that I borrowed two... Uh, push mowers from him and to mow my lawn. One with each arm. I'm telling I have a <laughs> massive yard now. I have yeah, it's this big. It's pretty big. immense amount of yard yeah. to mow with a tiny house in the middle yeah. of this <laughs> island of yard. And so uh, the one day I did it, God damn, it was so humid Always. and it was so yep. hot. And I'm mowing you're, this. It's moist. Th it's moist <laughs> out there. And you this feel like huge you're like, yard. You feel like you're, as you're pushing more, you have to like swim through the yeah. air. Ugh. And there are several places on my yard where it's like a hill and it's yeah, angled yeah. and I think I'm going to die. It's going to fall on top of me, something like that. I did once it's, in Mee County because I had a huge, and you guys never got to go up Mee County where I lived, yeah. but a huge slope. <laughs> and, oh, I, and, oh, I, and I was scary. a push mower and I would go 
horizontally so that it wouldn't be as bad. Yeah. But sometimes, like, I would be pushing and I would start to slip and my foot would get really close yeah. to that lawnmower. Yeah. yeah, that's scary, isn't it? Yeah. It, I mean, if ah. I, it might be fun to mow my lawn if I had a lawn riding lawnmower. Yeah. Sure. Once or twice. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. There'd be times when you're like, you know what? The weather's not kind of nice. But, I wouldn't yeah. mind doing it. You get it's your gonna, thoughts and together. But that would wear off quickly. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sure there's the charm of manual yeah. labor wears off real quick. And another thing for me is like those small, you, you mentioned nickel and diming earlier. Yeah. Like, Renewing the renewing my plates <coughs> for my car. Uh, oh, that, that is stupid. a pain it's in like, the ass. Come on, like what? Uh, well, just, here's the thing. I, when I oh. when I first moved here and I got my plates, I got plates with a waterfall on it. Yeah. And then the next year when it's renewed, they said that those were discontinued, so I had to turn right. it in and get a different plate. Well, I got a different plate, but there wasn't one that I liked as well. Yeah. It's like no, they're all ugly. why? Why couldn't they just grandfather the plate and let me have it yeah. anyway? I don't understand. That in either. Pennsylvania, I had a I had a plate that was. Um, that they discontinued, but they grandfathered the old plates in. I mean, because you, you just keep registering yeah, well, it. Yeah, obviously going to yeah. yours. Like, it's obviously going it's, to yours. It's already uh, been even if they don't produce anymore. For, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Here's there's just so much crap like that. Okay, I'll give you this fucking nightmare that happened when I got the Honda, uh, which I've had for you know two three weeks now. Yeah, and I go there, and the lady says before we can transfer this title. You have to pay back taxes on these other two vehicles. What? Yeah, and I didn't, I hadn't paid taxes on either of these vehicles for years mm -hmm. upon years. They, when they uh, registered the car I had before the last one I had, mm -hmm. they wrote my social security number down wrong. And so I never got, got notifications. Yeah. I never, nothing. And so all in one fell swoop, they figured the whole thing out. And then I had to pay. All that money just to to get my new car. But how were you how were you able to renew your license plate every year without paying the taxes? Because they didn't they have didn't my know. social they security didn't know. number. They didn't know. Was there, they they had written it down wrong. So, I kept giving them the right one. So you'd go in and you'd just get the new yeah, and sticker, they, and they wouldn't say, "Okay, well you you owe us money." Yeah. Well, it, I'm, see, I'm gonna place ridiculous, right? Now. right? How many thousands of dollars? No, it was. It was only it was only like one year of taxes on each of them. It wasn't bad, yeah, that's good. but still, I've been putting I wanted off my new car for a while because I moved down here in September, and my my driver's license is still Meade County. My license plate for my car is actually Nelson County because I bought it last summer <laughs> right, yeah. and I haven't updated it yet. And I've been putting it off for a while because I know I'm gonna have to go in and like do the license thing again. And right now I've got a really stupid mustache. I just had spring break last <laughs> right. week, and I'm like. Man, this would be a really convenient time to get all this stuff taken care right. of. But I got this on my mouth, so right. that's not happening this yeah. week. I've got this pencil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, to summarize my experience, yeah. the biggest bitch of it was, I hadn't driven any of those vehicles for like six, seven years. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And yet I'm for paying for, for them. For it. Yep. Paying tax on vehicles I'm getting a bill. trashed I'm getting years a bill ago. like once every two or three weeks. A water bill from Meade County. They think I owe them $90. They're oh, incorrect. Bullshit. So I keep... Look, picking out the new one that uh, adds like three dollars to the bill. I'm like, okay, trash. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. I paid no, my final bill. Have to pay I don't it. know why you think I owe you more money because yeah. I paid my final bill and I said, all right, transfer this. Right. And I got paid my last bill and I moved on. I don't know where you think ninety bucks is coming from. No. You're not getting it from me. Uh, so, so we adulting sucks. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, adulting is awful. Here's a, a, just a, a small side question. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you thought of yourself as an adult? Not like I'm a little kid. I can't wait till I grow up. But like, you, when something happened, you're like, shit. I'm an adult now, aren't I? Oh, it's not like, all right, I'm an adult <laughs> no, 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 now. Like, okay, because like, I this, can't tell that story this, on the In air. this same vein of adulting. Because I remember for me, it was in college, my junior year of college. Yeah. I finally moved off campus. And myself and a couple of my friends, we rented a house. And it was the first time that I had multiple bills mm, in the mail yeah. with my name on it. I'm like, oh, but... And, Oh, I have to do this, don't I? Like the, yeah, right. I had the rent; it was in my name. Yeah. The utilities were in my name. Water and electricity, and you know. Then I was finally getting the cable bill. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't much care for this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a specific memory, but I'm sure it was in college when I yeah. started paying rent and when I started having to buy my own groceries. Oh, when yeah. I moved out of the dorms, and right. I'm sure that's when it was. I think it's when I moved back from college and considered myself a failure for not having had a degree, and. Uh, was faced with, you know, you got to get a job, you've got to figure out a plan, you got to move out. That's mm -hmm. when I felt like, 
well, fuck. Now I'm an adult. The funny thing is, you mentioned groceries. That's the, actually one of the few things I love spending money on. Yeah. I do I love, love grocery going, shopping. I love going to Kroger and I'm it. like, all right, let's do this. Because I love I, grocery but that's, shopping. I'm, I'm the way with like clothing. I don't, buy, I don't like buying new clothing. I don't much care for that. No, but when I, I can go to Kroger either. or Barnes & Noble is the one other place I love spending money. Well, yeah. I, like bar- yeah. I like going to Barnes yeah. & Noble. I don't like groceries because I don't like thinking about food. I don't like <laughs> I don't like thinking about what do I need to eat in the future? What yeah. am I going to eat later? How am I going to prepare it i mean i can cook fine yeah. yeah i can bake fine i don't mind eating but don't mind eating <laughs> i guess Eating's i'm okay. okay with eating Eating's all right if it's <laughs> the right thing i food is pleasant um, <laughs> but is the, uh... it's but i guess my relationship with food makes me not want to spend any time thinking about it and here's yeah. the funny thing joe rem- joe will say well did you have leftovers and i for lunch yeah. and i'll say I don't remember what, what did we have last night. And right. she, she she can't understand how I cannot know <laughs> just, remember what we had last night because that's a like bodily like, function to you. It's right. like it's, it's like something that's yeah. and to, to illustrate this point, I went to we went to Cincinnati last week because we wanted to go to IKEA and so we stopped at Pizzeria Pizzeria Uno while we were there, Ooh, which is my yes. favorite place. And I got a large pizza so that I would have some to bring home. So I brought yeah. some home with me. And then the ne- the next day, when it's time for lunch, I went and I was looking around, and I started making some pizza bagels. My and Joe <laughs> said, "Why don't you have the leftover pizza from Pizzeria Uno?" I said, "Oh yeah, that's right. I had that. <laughs> that was something it's, I it's, deliberately yeah. did, on- did brought home so that I would right. have leftovers to eat, and I couldn't remember having <laughs> just <laughs> forgot having Pizzeria Uno, All like right. the best Chicago style pizza outside of Chicago. Absolutely, and you forgot." Yeah. This has been wow. one of the longest intros we've had because <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. Griping about being an adult is uh, fun, uh, but speaking of yeah, griping about things about. and fun, uh, Ron Blair, it is your turn to present. Uh, oh, a topic. man, here I know. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah, man, sorry, just, and I've got a ream of papers. He's got a paper, here, but I'm looking at it, and it's I printed just, them out. <laughs> it's just fart noises yeah. for like eight pages. It goes. <laughs> it just says fart Ooh. noises over and over. Fart noises. Fart noises. Jungle noises. I even have a question. Oh god. To begin it with. Oh my god. I know. Who are you? If only shocking. If only we didn't both know what the answer was. I know. I know. Unfortunately, I had to tip my hand to get some things done here (laughs) for this particular episode. I'm still going to get this question wrong. Have you... Well, I know the answer to the question. Uh, (laughs) I'm glad you know the answer to the question. Wait a minute. You've asked the question question. I was just about to ask. I have to ask a different question. Did either of you attend summer camp? I attended... Like a sleepover summer camp. Like overnight. Yeah, it wasn't really summer camp. I had... When I was in high school... I was kidnapped... I'm sorry. Well, it was called I'm Mad sorry. Camp, and it was like um, art and music and oh, okay. drama. And, uh, so, and so I, I always wanted to do there that. Was, there was a couple of years where for a week, I think it was a week or maybe it, was, it may have been up to two weeks, that um, I went to this Mad Camp. And it was a church, church-sponsored thing. And, um, and then there was like a couple yeah. like weekend sleepover sure. camp things that were connected with that happened throughout the year. And I used to no. love going to those. We'd go up to the I Black Forest in Colorado Springs. It was great. We went to the sixth grade, fun. but it was during the school year. It wasn't a summer thing. Okay. So I've never done a summer camp. I've gone camping during the summer. Yeah, that was never, my first question. I, was never, like, I know Jared's been Never camping. at a camp. I used to love camping when I was a kid. I just want to point out that these Twizzlers that I left on the table, I found in my backpack a week ago, and I don't remember when I put them in my backpack. They're chewy. I don't care. <laughs> really chewy. <laughs> I didn't buy the handful. Now, Jeff, since you did do a sleepover camp uh-huh. during the summer, yeah, were you ever stalked and murdered by Ooh, this is gonna be a by a one. masked murderer? Well, actually, oh, <laughs> I remember being murdered when I was sixteen. Yeah, um, were but you apparently doing it, at it the didn't. Time? Was it like a apparently spear it through didn't both take. of you? Yeah, it didn't take. That's good. For the rest of us. He does have an arrow-shaped scar in his throat. I've always wondered about yeah, that Yeah, that's one. good. It's yeah. good you survived that. Kevin Bacon did not. Yeah. <laughs> probably the best uh, and, and the next question, what is this Friday? What's happening this Friday? Uh, uh, I took a personal day. Oh, man, that's so that'll, yeah. so that'll Must be Friday yeah. the 13th. It must, it must be Friday the 13th. You know what that makes, makes next week? Tuesday the 17th. Yes! Right. You remember that? The 17th. The day that I'm going you to audition remember? for Annie. No, what? It's from Psych. It was the psych episode about Friday the 13th. Man, I can't remember six yeah. 
hours ago, much <laughs> less the two years ago that I saw these psych episodes. Tuesday the 17th, Annie auditions, and my 14th wedding anniversary. Oh, and just 14th sir. wedding anniversary. And while we're on the topic of congratulating Jeff, yeah. he showed us a book earlier. Yes. The Kentucky Theater Yearbook 2018, and Jeff has two entries for being a Kentucky playwright. That's so congratulations. Right. Well, thank you very much. Very, very impressive. Sir. Today we're going to talk about the phenomenon of Friday the 13th. All right. And how mediocre no. it is. What? Sorry? What? Now, <laughs> you shut your whore mouth. Here's what happened. Okay. All right. In 1972. A good year. Oh, we could either talk about Friday the 13th, the day, Ooh. and how it got its origins. That's interesting. No, not so much. <laughs> not so Wait much. It's like based on that there were 13 apostles, and, no. the, on the, and it was Good Friday. It, and was, then, the, it was the day oh. that the the um, that the Templars were rounded up and, and murdered in it, and all across Europe. Well, See, and, there you go, and there's another is, one. 12 is considered to be a wholly perfect number. And anytime you have a perfect number, you're one away it from perverts it. Perverts that, right. yeah. So that's like, why a so coven like is thirteen. And six is six. Is right. That number seven is a good number. Right. So, well, we we did that discussion anyway. So well, there you go. There's your minor history of that. that. We, all, we all contributed. <laughs> um, that's why they're here. They're here to learn. Or we could talk about trichodecophobia. Triskodecophobia. Triskodecophobia, which is the fear of the number thirteen. What if my fear is the word triskodecophobia? He said dick. Do you hear me? Said dick. He said dick. That's the response you would get if that were a fear. How about arachnophobia? I do not have arachnophobia. I believe you. Because <laughs> what the isn't that spiders that breathe through your face? <laughs> it's fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. Yes, <laughs> that is a fear. I played Charlie Brown once. He mentions how badly that sucks. Yep. No, we're going to talk about the film series Friday the Thirteenth. Um. I'm sticking mostly with the original. Okay. Good. It's the only one I've seen. And today I have some help from my friend Clint. Whoa! In he's Texas. in your pants right now. It's crazy. He's like, <laughs> he's I was been in my pants since 1995. <laughs> I went uh, to college with out. Clint. He is now writing a prequel to Friday the 13th. This is not commissioned. Uh, you know, it's not. So what, it's what, what would he be known for? What would he be known for? People that know him. Um. He was a head writer at Radio Disney for several years okay. in Dallas. Cool. And the best one is that he voiced some of the Billy Bass fish. The fish? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I know some Billy, Billy Bass. Bass he voiced fish. Billy Bass? Wow. He voiced the I actual Billy man Bass. Billy Bass that we don't know. <laughs> no, the Billy Bass toy. He worked for that company for a while. Okay. Yeah. So, um, All right. so if you can find a Billy Bass toy, that'll be his voice? It may be his voice. It may be, I can't so, remember the name of the company that that um, he worked for, but yeah, he did some writing for Bass them, Master I think Classic. did some voice of them. Bass <laughs> Master <laughs> was. He worked for Bass Masters of Dallas. <laughs> but he's writing this prequel to Friday the 13th to commemorate its upcoming anniversary. We wish him the best of luck on that. It's called Thursday um, the 12th. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's the day before the Friday the 13th. Um, it's, it's excellent. I've, I've read it. It's phenomenal. Um... So I have some sound clips. He's graced us with some sound clips. Oh, I've asked him some questions, so we'll integrate those into the program. But what Ron means is he's here with us right now. In spirit. I mean, he's here in the studio all the way from Dallas. I see what hey you're guys, doing hey now. Hey guys, I'm right here. Yeah, that sounds like Bart Levins. <laughs> Bart, Levin. That's Bart, Levin. Levin. Bart, what are you doing here? Go away. By the magic of telecommunication. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Telekinesis. What? So we'll, we'll defer some of these uh, questions, some of this report to my friend Clint. Because Ron's lazy. Well, I went to call him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lit. Yeah. No, you know uh, a guy. That, that helps. Right. I know a guy. I've actually went to college. Wait, you actually went to college with this guy? I know. <laughs> wait, wait. It's, it's, it's the first person event. that you've actually gone to college with? It's somebody who can, claims of? It's somebody who can prove that I actually <laughs> spent a year at the university. And met everyone else from every other episode of this podcast. Because he has tattooed on him somewhere. <laughs> huh? Because he has your name tattooed on him somewhere. Yeah, that's exactly and, and there's right. And there's a date at the bottom of the picture. And he's, uh, he used to work at this Mexican restaurant. I was quite the hermit during my second semester of university where I didn't want to leave the house or anything. And he would bring me Mexican food. From did the he, Mexican place. Did he, he shove at. it under the door? Uh, there, were some at days, a time. there were some days where he would have to because I just didn't want to open the door. There was one day... Out. Where I was farting in the room all day watching TV. So just like every other day of your life, <laughs> <laughs> I just spit everywhere. Like, like yes. Thursday, yeah, yeah. Like Thursday. I'm just farting in this room morning to night, doing nothing but watching That's TV. That's what the prequel is all about. Farting, and then he it's comes over that prequel. night. I open the door, and he makes this face, 
And then he walks into the room and goes, it stinks in here and it's warm. <laughs> At least he didn't say it's moist. Yeah, it's it's insul- moist in here. Your farts had insulated the room. It had insulated the room. It was Man, warm in that, that room. Is, that is terrifying. That's a thing that can happen. <laughs> However. It, it's like living inside of Ron's farts. <coughs> we that's know, right. We, we, got, we kind of do. <laughs> you kind of do, as it is. So, uh, six years, five years before Friday the 13th was released, but before it was even considered, producer Sean S. Cunningham, who actually used to be a um, theatrical uh, manager Mm -hmm. uh, for several high-profile New York theaters, Mm -hmm. uh, he would manage the companies, and decided that he wanted to get into producing film. And so he and Wes Craven in 1972 produced Last House on the Left, Hmm. which became a drive-in sensation. Not a mainstream by by any means, but it was, you know, big on the grindhouse circuit and in Mm -hmm. drive-ins. You know, it probably made him a little bit of money, not... Not like a Hollywood lifestyle. They're, it's still indie guys. The first thing you know? I hear when I think of when I hear Last House on the Left is like, I would. I know. I know of that horror movie. I, mean, yeah. I haven't seen it, but I know that name and what it evokes. But it, it makes me wish I lived in the Last House on the Left on a street, so yeah. that when I order a pizza, I could be like, <laughs> the Last House on the Left. I do live on the Last House on the Left. <laughs> Only the pizza guy street. won't get it. Yeah, he wouldn't understand. <laughs> uh, Last House on the Left. Very disturbing. Very scary. Isn't the right word. Mm-hmm. Because it is exploitation and it's gritty and unapologetic. Yeah. It's very violent and it, it's disturbing. It's a really disturbing film, but not not scary. It's not thrilling. Um, and so in 1978, John Carpenter made history with Halloween. Oh, right. There we go. And uh, that became, the at that time, the biggest grossing independent film ever mm. and you know in it's history so wow. up to that point it's a, it's an excellent film it took yeah. the world by storm and then horror which had outside of the exorcist uh or, or films like the omen or whatnot mm. uh were pretty much relegated to the grindhouses and the right. drive-ins it wasn't what you would do for mainstream entertainment and then halloween changed all that yeah. in 1978 so okay. then in 1979 john Cun- uh, sean cunningham who was really wanting to distance himself from the exploitative aspects of Last House on the Left, uh, decided that he also wanted to ride this uh, newfound profitability in the horror genre. And so he has admitted that he's ripping off the slasher genre. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's ripping off Halloween with Friday the 13th. Um, But he has said that he wanted it to be shocking, which at the time it certainly was, uh, visually stunning, which it is, and make you jump out of your seat, which it does. It's um, it's a very good murder mystery if you don't compare it to other good murder mysteries. Right. Like, if you it's don't not it. a good movie by... But it's entertaining. What, what, yeah, that's the thing. It has so much charm. And it is fascinating to watch these people. Uh, because the in this Friday the 13th, the original Friday the 13th, they are built up as people, mm-hmm. human beings. And you... you like them you meet them quickly you like them and then they're dispatched so there's more tragedy to it as opposed to in the 80s where there weren't the victims weren't likable right in the right. 80s films because be. jason and freddie and michael were the heroes of the film yeah so uh whenever they dispatch somebody you would want to cheer because you didn't like the people that they were yeah. dispatching. now can i ask you yeah for friday the 13th the cabin in the woods style of yeah. horror was this the first, or were there horror movies before that that kind of played on the you and your friends are in the wood, there is no escape from this force? I'll say that this was the one that popularized okay. that. The, the subgenre of do not go where you don't belong yeah. had existed for several years. Psycho, one of the sure. early slasher yeah. films where you find yourself in a place you're not supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Of course. Well, but, I, but is, is Psycho really categorized as a slasher film? I mean, there's the, the murder in it, but it, there's not murders all over. There, it's not. My idea of a slasher movie is people are just dispatched yeah. here and there. I want to say it's, dropping like it's yeah. not technically a slasher film, but where would slasher films be oh, no, without, yeah. you, it's, uh, you know, yeah, that right there, that. without Psycho having... But I just think of, there's so many, I mean, I'm thinking like, 
mostly 80s, and that's not my really my time period, but yeah. the Cabin in the Woods, even like late 90s, 2000s, there were like uh, Wolf, not Wolf Creek, but... Uh, no, that lot, was early yeah, Well, that was early 2000s. Yeah, a lot of those like, you're in the woods, there's right. something. Whatever it is, it's something. It right. could be a beast, it could be a human, it could be a plague mm. that's, that you're stuck and you can't get away from it while you're there. That's, 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 that's Friday the 13th is the first one in my head of like, that's where this and that, started. Yeah, that, it popularized that mm. entire sort of... Uh, camping out the woods became much scarier yeah. it it stopped being the the gothic woods with the the mist going through it and the werewolf over yeah. there in the corner and it became well l let me put it this way you had that subgenre psycho uh text chainsaw massacre uh hills have eyes where you went to a place you weren't supposed to go mm -hmm. and you were dealt consequences mm -hmm. due to not being where you belong right in the film halloween the murderer came to, to your, your house, house. Yeah. and stalked you in your home, in your neighborhood. And Friday the 13th, I really think, is a, a melding of those two thoughts. Whereas, if you're at a summer camp, you're supposed to be there. Yeah, it's a safe place. Right. Yeah, for quotes. them, it, it's their job mm -hmm. to be there and to, to reconstruct this old uh, summer camp. Um, but it's also, there's something out there that doesn't want you there. Mm. Because where you work is the place you're not supposed to go. Yeah. So it really marries those two concepts really nicely. Yeah, I, I feel like Psycho, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, the ones you've mentioned, it's like, you're not supposed to be there, but why would you want to be there? Right. I don't want to be those places. I just happen to actually end up there. Whereas this is a place I want to be there, yeah. but I now I shouldn't be. It's your job. It it's feels fun. like it should be safe. Yeah. The beginning of the film, they're having a good time. Yeah. They're swimming, playing pranks on and each the other. The shark shows up, and, and then the shark shows up, right. eats everybody, yeah. dun, 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 <laughs> eats everybody. Dun, 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 dun. End of film. I don't, yeah, I think I've got this. John Williams the, school. Yeah. The original Friday the Thirteenth <laughs> is ten minutes long. Yeah. Because of that goddamn shark. Anyway. Sean Cunningham knew that he wanted to make a real scary movie, but at the same time, uh, give him some chuckles. You know, add that element of charm to it. Because the, uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis had made exploitation, bloodbath, right. serious, dramatic, terrifying film. Mostly just bloody. They were excuses to be over-the-top gore in the 60s. And um, Sean Cunningham had done that with The Last House on the Left. It was a cerebral film, and it was very well made. It was beautifully shot, but... Last House on the Left was still just throwing gore and perverse concepts at the audiences. Uh, with Friday the 13th, he wanted something more than that. He wanted to add that element of charm, uh, likable characters. He actually said when they were looking for actors, he wanted kids you might see in a Coke commercial. Yeah. Good-looking kids. And they've, they've maintained that throughout the series. These good-looking kids who are out in the woods. Yeah, so you feel bad when something bad happens to them, as opposed to being happy they're dying. Well, until, until, used to until, until, until part make, four. Until uh, they make a decision. The bad yeah, decision. The bad decision. Right, right. Yeah. This uh, The Friday the 13th series is not as morally grounded as Halloween, mm -hmm. but there are consequences for smoking dope, having Absolutely. sex, doing all that you stuff. You will be killed by a you'll, thing. you'll get that's an arrow through the throat that's like Kevin Bacon. Drink. That's why I don't yeah. drink. Yeah, you shouldn't, yeah. because... Arrow through the throat. That's what I'm saying. Very painful way to go. <laughs> that's you so, know that's that's how I was murdered when I went to summer. That's wow. exactly because of the scar on yeah. your throat. Yeah. Um, so he, now he pours alcohol in that, <laughs> which is the way to do it. <laughs> now Sean Cunningham, all he had was the title of Friday the Thirteenth uh, that he really liked, and of course, like Halloween, and then later April Fool's Day, which Frank Mancuso. Junior produced, he was a producer of the sequels of Friday 13th, mm -hmm. the second and third one. Um, you know, you had April Fool's Day, Halloween, Prom Night, all these that based on one particular mm -hmm. day or yeah. event. Uh, so Sean Cunningham really, he was the one, he stole from Halloween as far as that goes, but he said, this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Friday the 13th, that's a day, uh, you know, this special day. That people are a little nervous about. Um, so he commissioned the writer Victor Miller to do... Um, to write a script called A Long Night at Camp Blood, which is an awful, name. awful, <laughs> awful title. Oh, yeah. But Cunningham really loved the Friday the 13th moniker. He Here's really liked that name. I'm going to stop you right there. Yeah. And I want Jeff to deliver that name in his deepest oh, do Jeff it. voice. Do it. Okay, what's the, what's the on, name again? Can you, can you, show, can you read yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> because it just reminds me of those trailers we did. And oh, Jeff, yeah. Jeff's narration was yeah. so good. A Long Night. Okay. Yeah. A long night at Camp Blood. Mm. Yeah, that's it. 
Scintillating. I'd see that movie. Actually. Dumb name, but when Jeff reads it, I'm in. A long night at Camp Blood. I have asked my buddy Clint to tell us more about... uh, Yeah, Clint, come on up. Come on up. (laughs) Come on up. Let's let's hear this story of Sean Cunningham and what he did before the script was ever written. The story about the variety column was actually kind of a funny story. Um, Sean S. Cunningham came up with this idea... It just it, it's 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 like any one of us except for he had the luxury of being in Los Angeles at the time and having some connections. Uh, he knew he wanted to make a horror film uh, or a slasher film, um, but he didn't know anything about it. He just knew he wanted to make one, and so he actually he came up with the name Friday the Thirteenth because it was supposed to be the scariest or most unlucky day of the year, obviously. So he he suddenly realized nobody's made a movie. Well, no, a notable movie anyway, called Friday the 13th. I'm going to call my next horror movie Friday the 13th, and I'm going to put out an ad in Variety to show everybody that I'm making a movie called Friday the 13th, and nobody else can have it. Well, at the same time, he thought, well, wait a minute. If I make this ad look like it's something terrifying, and in fact, if I even say it's going to be the most terrifying film ever made, then... Maybe all of a sudden I could have some backers to actually give me some money so I can hire somebody to write me a great script for this and some you know some filmmakers to shoot it and put it together and hire you know Harry Menfredini to give me a, a great musical score and so that's what he did he went and he bought this full page ad in Variety uh, full black and white had the classic Friday the Thirteenth logo smashing through the glass and said the most terrifying film ever made and it com- was so compelling he actually received several phone calls within a week saying hey we want to throw some money at you can we can we be in on this so that's, a, that's kind of the way that he he immediately just okay well i'm getting my movie made now i love that it's the <laughs> come listen to the scariest movie that hasn't been made yet that hasn't I know. been written <laughs> hasn't we, been written this, at we have time, no story it's terrifying, but it's terrifying. Chill your how bones. ballsy is Sean Cunningham for saying I'm going to release the greatest print ad for a horror film and it worked it doesn't exist it no. actually thank worked. god he was able to make the greatest print ad for a, <laughs> right. for a movie now did the print ad include the hockey mask no, no, okay. no, no. We'll he said, get he to said that. The, okay, he said the Friday the 13th, so I don't know what that image okay. is. That's the so here's my yeah. question. How can I bullshit my way yeah. to <laughs> having backers for stuff Musicals. I want to do? Well, I'm telling you, it, it, get to know Sean Cunningham. Hey, because he was a master this right? of this stuff. Yeah, he's he's listening to it right now from <laughs> his ivory tower, it. along with my brother but, at NBC. Yeah, they're going to show it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but the last house on the left—that's the one that had the poster that says, uh, "To keep from fainting, keep telling yourself it's only a movie. It's only a movie. That's a good it's line. A that's a that's good, good stuff. Yeah. I mean, he knew how to sell a horror movie." And so uh, that story proves yeah. it. Jeff, you need to steal Bart's line of "There won't be a dry seat in the house." Dry seat in the house. I love that. Yeah. So, yeah, my notes are all messed up, too. I don't know what happened here. You put well, it together. I put it together. That's exactly what happened. I printed out what you sent me. <laughs> so, right. Right. That's no surprise there. And there's the Sean Cunningham story. That was in my notes. Good. So that's great. Uh, the film was shot in and around the townships of Hardwick, Blairstown. Blairstown. Thank you, what? And Hope, New Jersey in was September 1979. It was Ron. It's, it is now. It's Ron Blairstown, New Jersey. I'm a colonel, so if you want, I can make that official. God damn it, Jared. <laughs> Ruby LaFoon. All I've ever wanted to do was be a colonel. me colonel. <laughs> with his scepter. Yeah. The uh, camp scenes were shot on a working Boy Scout camp called Camp No Be Bosco. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. No Which, New Jersey is the dumbest state <laughs> ever. I, uh, yeah, that's actually not true. New that's actually I've been to a true. lot of states. <laughs> New Jersey's like education system is pretty high. That's awesome. It's the just road the culture, system sucks. The culture's just a little odd. I don't know. I you, never met anybody. You've only been on 95, though, in the road system. And you it haven't... sucks so bad. Well, it does. Atlanta's it's, worse. It's got, oh, it's Atlanta's, Atlanta's much worse. Traffic. Atlanta's worse, too. Oh, Atlanta. Well, Atlanta. Atlanta is worse than New Jersey. Yeah. The Atlanta's roads. The worst, I, the, think. I don't think the roads in Chicago are bad. The people are assholes. They yeah. don't care for you. Well, so, it's also so eight lanes I'm an asshole, sure. It, oh, no shit. And they'll just zip right over all yeah. of Just like Atlanta. Like, they'll zip right in front of you. I've gotten out of my Horrible. car in Atlanta before. There was one time I was driving to my mom when she lived in Georgia. It's I got, terrifying, I got out of my car. isn't it? It was just like... Yeah. 
the hell? It's horrifying driving in yep. Atlanta. Uh, anyway, which uh, Georgia is where I thought Camp Crystal Lake always was. I don't no, know I why I thought that. I just thought, yeah, it's probably Georgia. Walking around, around speaking I absolutely Georgia had accents. My mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was a rainy night in Georgia uh, right. and when Friday the 13th happened. Yeah. This camp that they shot at still, uh, it's still there. I'm sure it is. Noby Bobosco. That's not what you said. I was close. Nabisco. Uh, camp still, Nabisco. Still, <laughs> still standing. With the dwarves. Yeah. Still yeah, a summer mean, camp. Dwarves. Bless their hearts because there are not a lot of summer really? camps left in America. After all like, those people died? After everybody like, was murdered. But I mean, like you say still running, but I feel like they could make so much money off of this. Yeah. Oh, interesting you say that because they do have a little museum up there with paraphernalia from the movie. Uh, I mean, who doesn't want to send their kids to the camp where Friday 13th That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, like, I'm, even if camp sure was that in would session. Be the, that would be one of the creepiest things to do, though, if you're at that camp to have all this Friday the 13th memorabilia yeah. from the movies. It's, it's like, I can see kids being creeped I out their like entire time there. I feel like they're cabins, and all of a sudden should be the best, though, because... Like, if I live anywhere near there or was taking a trip, I would want to go check out this yeah. location. I feel like they could well, make the, so much money off that. The thing about Friday the 13th film, the kids don't die. Kids yeah. are kids are safe. Yeah. In Friday the 13th Part 6, there was an opportunity for Jason to slaughter several children, and oh, he did okay. not. Sure. He was after the counselors, because the story goes... Let's get into the story. Oh, I'm in it. <laughs> okay. I'm in it. Into this deep... Into this let's, deep story let's get that is deep. Friday the 13th. And there there will be spoiler alerts, obviously. I mean, is that, are you giving one right now? Or you mean the, I think you mean there'll be spoilers. The, yeah, that's what it'll be. <laughs> you mean spoiler there alert, will be spoilers. there will be spoilers. Yeah, whatever it means. Anyway, so for, for the three of you that have not seen Friday the 13th, the original... He's talking to me and Jared. Oh, I'm like talking that. to you guys. I think he means like that there are only three people listening. <laughs> right, there were those guys. And Emily Cole. Uh, I doubt Emily's seen it. Yeah. I don't know. Jessica that, has it. Jessica that, oh, Jessica. This, this podcast is dedicated to Jessica you. Russo. I know. That's what scares me right now. I know Jessica's <laughs> going to listen, and she's going to be like, well, that's incorrect. But, um... Uh, story. I, You know, now that I think about the story to Friday the 13th, I'm fairly empty. Because, really? the, well, what there is story, no story is there? Kids show up. Yeah. They are, okay, a, the, a girl named Annie shows up to this tiny little bucolic town, uh, and she's like, does anybody know where Camp Blood is? No, she doesn't say Camp Blood. She says Camp, <laughs> Camp Crystal, Crystal Lake. Lake. She says Camp Crystal Lake. Does she and, say that the sun will come out tomorrow? Yeah, she says yes. so. Yes, <laughs> Annie says, as she's being, you're as never her fully throat, dressed without a machete. As That's her good. throat is being slit, <laughs> she's going, you're never, <laughs> That's what tomorrow sounds like from that lady. Um... <laughs> She shows up at this little restaurant, and she's like, I'm working at the camp. I'm their new cook. And it's one of those things where, you know, in a movie where you see somebody walk into a place, and the record skips, and everybody looks at them, and that's kind of what the, the diner does. They're like, what the fuck? She's going to the camp. Yeah, we heard they were opening that. It's a horrible place. It's cursed. Stay away from it. You don't it. want to go there. Is, that's it. <laughs> it's, the whole, it's a whole diner full of people going, no, don't go down there. You know, it's dangerous. Actually, it's a truck driver who takes her <laughs> to Aya. Oh, boy, oh. Uh, he takes her to a, a crossroads. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah, tell me this is not deep filmmaking. <laughs> takes her to the crossroads. And during you that have ride. A choice to make. <laughs> right. During that ride, uh, he's, you know, he's like, stay away from it. It's horrible. There were it's exposition, exposition. Yeah. There were murders back Let in the day. There were two the murders and a kid drowned and there were some fires. And so she ignores him. She's like, oh, you're just superstitious. So she's walking to camp. She takes a ride from somebody. She has somebody. to walk to camp? She has to walk. Ha well, they get her halfway. The crossroads is the halfway point. And this is the eight, early, she late really 70s, early 80s. She to go to this camp. It was when it was safe yeah. to be a hitchhiker. It was never safe and to so, be a hitchhiker. That's true. Uh, but she's picked up in a Jeep by a faceless person. Like, they never they show don't this have person's a face. face. So then you go, well, that, oh, that I wonder if this will be the person that murders this girl <laughs> because they're not showing this person's face. And sure enough, like, she goes, oh, we're driving too fast. The camp road is over there. And then she jumps out of the Jeep and then gets her throat slit. I mean, it's built up better than what I just did. I would never get in a Jeep with someone who doesn't have a face. I know. That's, um, a, that's, a, that's, that's a giveaway. <laughs> that's a clear giveaway. Don't I trust saw, this person. You've got a head and a faceless. neck and a body, but There was a French there. film called Eyes Without a Face, and that's what a faceless person looks like. Terrifying. Don't, don't take that ride. Lest you, lest no, you have don't your do it. You're saying don't, don't do it. Do it. Just I'm saying don't, don't do it. it. All right, that's, there you go. You, you heard that right here. You heard don't it here first. It. 
<laughs> don't take a ride from a faceless person. All no right. offense to faceless people. No, I'm sure they're nice people. Complete offense to faceless people. Okay, you got me there. <laughs> complete offense. Anyway, she and then and then after she dies, cut to a group of teenagers, like six teenagers frolicking. who are in, frolicking. They're enjoying the camp. Mm. Enjoying the, each other. The boss, right? Steve uh, Christie. Well, we yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah. Steve Christie is like, hey, I got to go get some supplies. So you guys is just he hold down to Chris the fort. Christie? Yeah. Yes, I'm afraid so. Oh, and Christy wow. Teigen. Uh, and Christy Teigen and Chris... Mel, Ernst? Mel Mermont, my <laughs> my, <laughs> my other college roommate. Uh, I lived in a mansion in college. There were like 30 Obviously. of us uh, living there. But anyway. In, in Russia. Anyway, so in I was, Russia. Right. I was going to go back to the, uh, I couldn't remember what country it was. Was it Chile? Chile. Well, we had the, the Nazis, yeah, Chile, the Nazi yeah. had the, the, the fortress had the there. fortress, that's yeah, where yeah, I went to college. Actually, Argentina. Argentina, I'm like, yeah, I knew it was Argentina, that's Argentina. what it was. Argentina. Anyway, so they're all having a good time, they're having fun, there's the one the one jerk that fakes drowning so that he can get mouth to mouth from a girl, and then it's like, he We've kisses all her, that. What a right, dick. that whole thing. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's the first to he go, has so it it's okay. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. the he first of those guys. Exactly. Um... And so then, then uh, two, Kevin Bacon and another girl decide they're going to go off to a cabin. Was well, this like Kevin Bacon's some... first movie? Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. Yes. My first re- movie that I remember him in was Footloose. Oh no, Footloose. that was eighty two. This was two years before then, wow. two years prior. Yeah, this was like his his film debut. Wow. Uh, Kevin Bacon actually one of the characters so was Bing Crosby's is, so, kid. So during this, you would yeah, say Harry, Kev- Harry Crosby for Kevin Bacon, the arrow yeah. was pointing upward. Oh, for those who don't know, got it. For those who don't know, <laughs> Kevin Bacon gets an arrow through the throat from below, film, which is uh, really it was really cool the way they did it because yeah. when you watch the movie, the blood is just spreading the hand upwards comes over his was his forehead. Over his forehead, yeah. yeah. Arrow goes through his throat, and then blood just starts spurting up, and right. you go, "Wow, that's an awesome!" Effect. And you go, "Wow, an arrow would snap before right. it goes through right. his throat." Of course, well, a nerd like you would say that because you know better. <laughs> Uh, the still, rest of us don't know shot. better. It's oh, it's shot, cool. Though. It's so cool when it happens. <laughs> and it was actually Tom Savini and and or his buddy Tasso Savrakis. Excuse me? Tasso Savrakis? Tasso Savrakis, yeah. They're, they're from Pennsylvania. Oh, he's Give a Mexican. Oh, okay. you know? Are you sure he yeah, wasn't Tasso a Mexican Savrakis. restaurant? Because that sounds he like may a have been a Me- <laughs> He may have been a Greek restaurant. But uh, Tasso is under there with, <laughs> with a tube. Tasso with, and taco. It's the t- And just blowing the blood. Spurring out of his job. neck. That's a job. Yeah. Right? That's a cool And I mean, job. that shot is memorable, too. <laughs> oh, like, remember you it. remember that remember shot that. where it's yeah. like, I ah. couldn't tell you a single other death from that movie. Axe in the forehead. Hatchet in the forehead. It was oh, very was cool. I was thinking that was from my childhood. That was both. <laughs> oh. Um, that, that was Kevin Bacon's girlfriend. who Her character is so damn charming in it. She's yeah. funny. She's like uh, n- comedy, comedy relief that is not overtly comedic. She's just doing a bit. Yeah. She's being... You know, funny herself. Endearing, she's being charming. Yeah. And right after she's charming, she's like, what's that noise? Hatchet in the forehead. Nice. This is, And also, while, while her and Kevin Bacon are making love, there's a beautiful shot of them doing it. And then the camera pans up to see their friend Ned on the bunk above them with his throat slit. Oh, he's already dead. He's what? dead. What did he do while yeah. they're doing it? Ned's the one that pretended that he was drowning. Oh, okay. So he's, yeah. a, he's just a dick. Yeah, he was just like very lonely and he was obnoxious. and mm. He was kind of the Crown comedy dead. relief. Yeah, you're dead, Jared, <laughs> right off the bat. Uh, the three of us will not survive a horror Jeff, film. Jeff, so Jeff, Jeff basically, Jeff he was Mike. Gary. Yeah. He was Gary. Yes, Ned was Gary. So then that leaves three other people. There's the manly man. Who actually? This is kind of interesting. It's uh, the I'll final, be the, judge of that. the final girl, eight, played by Adrian King, who is a superior human being. I've met her many times. She's beautiful and wonderful. Um, and then uh, the Bing Crosby's mm-hmm. kid, and then this other woman. Again, all charming people, but you've got the macho guy, and then the girl that you kind of sense if anybody survives, it'll be her. And then the other girl who you think, well, I hope she survives with her because I really like them. And they start playing Strip Monopoly. See, of course. And so Strip Jason's Monopoly. mom fucks up a potential Whoa, threesome spoiler. with this guy. I, I mean, just kind of. It wasn't overtly heading that way, but you think, playing Strip Monopoly with two chicks. Every time I've done that, yeah, I've you, just you, been you kind of develop certain expectations that will happened. lead to disappointment, yes. as in this <laughs> film, right? Yes. And so, of course, uh, something happens, and one of them goes out there. Oh, the girl goes out there. The girl goes out there, and she hears these noises like, help me. 
And she's like, where are you? And she goes out onto the archery range, and she's like, where are you? And then we just hear a scream. She goes out on the archery range. On the archery range. And there was a bit <laughs> earlier that set up the archery range. Yeah. So that later you go, no, don't go to the archery range. And so there's a scream, and it's like this ambiguous kind of thing. You never where you know go, what happened to her? You ne well, you, you eventually find out. But right at that moment, what you go... Um, I don't remember. All right. Yeah. Okay. yeah, actually, she dies off camera. She's dead somewhere. Yeah. Um, maybe you don't find out. I know the guy, the guy that's like, here, Alice, the final girl, here, Alice, you stay in the cabin. I'm going to see what's going on outside. Because it's always a great idea in a horror movie split to up. split up. Well, that before Friday the 13th, it was okay. There was no horror movie to show you that it's not okay to split up. Well, there was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Those guys split up, and it ended poorly. And I, and I guess in the hills have we eyes, can they cover split more up. Ground this way. <laughs> That's what the hills yeah. have eyes was. We can we can right. split. But up. if we're together and someone shows up, we've got a fighting chance. Right. We can all <laughs> jump on this one guy we with all the leap chainsaw. On the machete. Right. Uh, so yeah, I guess they should have known better. But you know, the, the horror films weren't popularized back then. These kids didn't go to the grindhouse to see horror films, and so so um. Bill disappears, and then Alice is like, why are the lights coming on in the archery range? This is so weird. She opens the door. Boom. Bill. Throat slit. Arrows through him. She freaks out. She starts running. She runs into this lady, a very pleasant woman, who is like, you're safe now. Everything's fine. I'm only marginally creepy. I'm only marginally creepy. <laughs> I'll, I'll take My care of Annie you. Wilkes. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> uh, played by Betsy Palmer, who was... At the time, she was a Broadway diva. Mm. Like, she had a great career. She was uh, the biggest name in this movie. Yeah. Um, originally, it was uh, Estelle Parsons, who was supposed to play Jason's really? mom. Yeah. Yeah, from Bonnie and Clyde, and uh, also a Broadway diva, many uh, Broadway credits. Uh, she decided it was too violent and didn't want to do it. Betsy Palmer, on the other hand, she said, this is a piece of shit script. However, they're offering me $10,000... And it just so happens I need a new car, which in 1979, <laughs> you could purchase yeah, a nice new car for $10,000. Nothing will ever become this movie, but hey. <laughs> right, it's right. That's what no one will see it. Nobody <laughs> will ever see this exploitation garbage. Yeah, but I'll have a new car. <laughs> she made so much money off of the convention circuits oh, yeah. all after they this. They bought her at know. least a car. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's what she thought, the only thing it was going to give her. And it ended up getting her hepatitis. kind of a hepatitis from being out in the woods. <laughs> Another kind of neat thing is that some of the more dedicated uh, cast and crew members, mm -hmm. they just stayed in the camp. They had gotten them cheap motel rooms yeah. in, in town. Mm -hmm. And some of them were like, well, fuck that. we got a camp here. We've got beds. Let's just stay yeah. there. Yeah. And they had, a, somebody had a Betamax uh, oh, video really? player <laughs> and a limited amount of films and so every night they would just watch these films repeatedly. Tom wow. Savini has gone on record as saying um, he knows every word to The Marathon Man with Dustin Hoffman well, because of watching it every it's night. It's a great movie. If you're going to have to memorize every word to a uh, movie, that's a movie yeah, to go with. Yeah, Marathon Man was a good flick. So anyway, uh, Alice uh, become uh, betrayed, obviously, when the lady's like... They weren't watching my son, Jason, who drowned. Uh, these counselors were off making love while my son was drowning. And you're one of the counselors, so I'm going to fuck you up now. And then, of course, Alice is like, no, you're not going to fuck me up. I'm not tough, but my survival instinct kicks mm -hmm. in. And then it's the obligatory obligatory chase over the last 10 minutes of the film. Uh, excellent chase, excellent battle where you find out how crazy uh, Jason's mom actually was. And Alice... Uh, eventually chops her head off on yeah. the beach, on the beach of the That'll lake. That'll do it. Yeah. In, in a great scene, great beheading scene, which I think may have also been Stavros with just the, the, uh, the appliance over the top of his head and then the blue, iconic blue sweater that the mother was wearing mm. and then just clutching at the head while it pumped a little bit of blood up. Yeah, I mean, it's a really cool wow. image in that film. And then Alice gets on a canoe mm -hmm. and as goes out would. to... As, as one would. As one would. one would. And, and she and she floats out to the middle of the lake peacefully. Now this is where the script ended. There was not much more to mm -hmm. the film. I don't know if the script exactly ends there, but there may have been a prologue right. or an epilogue. There may not have been. But everybody was going. There's no ending here. There's no punch. There's you know it's she survived. That's great. And now we're just going to wistfully end it. 
So Savini said, you know what? Let's have Jason jump out of the water and attack this, attack the survivor, even if she's imagining it. Mm -hmm. And so you have this, this final little bit, this final epilogue where she's floating peacefully on the lake. Comes the up cops the are pulling up. Yeah. yeah, the cops are pulling up. They're like, hey, there's somebody out in the water. And she sees the cops and she's like, I've been through, she doesn't say anything, but you see it on her face. I've been through hell. I'm floating here peacefully. Thank God the cops are here. Boom. Yeah. Jason comes out like everybody that shot shits is their amazing. pants. It's an amazing shot. Every, yes, it is. It absolutely is. Every Ari Lehman is the guy that played little Jason. Mm -hmm. He had actually not been cast in a film that Cunningham had produced prior to this. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to show them how enthusiastic, of, he was a 14-year-old actor, uh, oh, wanted wow. to show them how enthusiastic he was about playing this role. <laughs> and so, you know, they've got him down to his nothing but his, sh uh, uh, but his shorts, and they've got these heavy appliances on this tiny, skinny, he's still tiny, he's a little guy, a uh, 14-year-old kid who is just so enthusiastic about pulling this woman he under the water. leaps out of the water. The reason, uh, the, honestly, one of the reasons I think Friday 13th really haunts people at the end is not because it's a better film or anything but because uh first of all adrian king has piercing beautiful blue eyes she's just a gorgeous woman and at the end she goes what happened to the boy and the sheriff is like well we didn't find any boy and she goes she looks directly at the camera and go then he's still there and then it echoes as it shows the the lake he's still there still there still there and then the music starts and the credits roll and it's chilling it's a great ending so does jason Story wise, actually, die. How does he come back? If he did, he, what happened to him? Why does his mother think he was dead if he's actually still alive in the lake? I don't know. How, they don't explain it from uh, the next they, movies. I, there's no way to explain it. I don't think. I, I don't think there is. It's just the fact that Friday the Thirteenth made so much money that Paramount said, "Well, well let's, this let's, is going to happen again." Yeah, we're doing. You this. know, we, this was a. Uh, it cost like I don't know five hundred thousand dollars to produce. That's probably off a little but bit. As but as scary as this woman but, was with the machete and the hockey mask, imagine if it was this unkillable force. That's the thing. They're they're like, well, let's bring the sun in, mm -hmm. uh, and it can be Jason. Not a lot of people were hot on that idea. Sean Cunningham did not like that idea. But by this point, he had made his film. He made his little bit of money. He was yeah. he was cool with backing off. So that's when Frank Mancuso uh, Jr. took over, and Steve they hired Steve Miner to direct the film, who's an excellent director, and. Um, and they decided to go with this theory that Jason had survived drowning. He survived in a this shack out in the woods, this torn, you know, a de decrepit mm -hmm. shack, and that anybody who comes into those woods, and, and he snapped after seeing his mother beheaded. Uh, part two takes place five years after, and so all you know is that there's a guy with a sack on his head he looks like the guy from the town that dreaded sundown mm -hmm. all through the second one uh slashing counselors camp counselors who are there for a um a, it's an all counselor training kind of thing that they're having so there's for, no children around so there's no children nothing like no, that no collateral so, damage yeah nothing like that and the same with the first one it was they were getting the camp ready, ready. the sixth one was the only one where there were actual children at the camp mm -hmm. um and by then, Jason was a zombie because they... Because of course he is. Yeah. Yeah, that's how the progression occurred. But um, and then he took Manhattan. <laughs> oh, Jason. God, please. And then he went into space. Those were the worst fucking movies. <laughs> I swear to God. I would leave the theaters angry yeah. at, at those films. The seventh one was the last one that I could tolerate. Yeah. I only saw the eighth one on video and I was actually angry... <laughs> About it. The seventh was the last one you could tolerate, but then you saw the eighth one. Well, yeah, I was, I'm a completist, man. I had seen them all until then. So, so as we're, we're kind of coming toward the end. I know, it's horrible. Are there any other this questions you want to ask Clint? Oh, I do want to ask Clint uh, what kind of uh, impact that this film has had on American culture. It's obviously, it has several sequels. The Hockey Mask is iconic. That was introduced in the third one. Uh, I could seriously go on for another day and a half yeah. on the Friday 13th series. I, I, I want to say it's a great series. It's not a great series of movies, <laughs> but it's one that's close to my heart. Yeah. I grew up with it. I enjoy and watching. it had a great start. It and, really and it did. it really has changed the, the, the horror genre because of its impact. Absolutely. It, 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 that, Halloween, Psycho, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a lot of the ones that I've talked about mm -hmm. on this podcast ha had enormous impact and mm -hmm. changed the way which is uh, why they're they still being made. Films. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Yeah. They're still trying to milk uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, and yeah. they're succeeding at making money off of that. And they're still trying to work on Friday the 13th. There's somebody somewhere uh, right now. Uh, you have a new one line of cinema. Yeah, I know one guy. Uh, Sean Cunningham wanted to kind of get back into it, keep milking that cash cow. But let's talk to Clint, find out Ask what kind of impact. Again, yeah. What kind of impact has uh, Friday the 13th had on American culture? Basically, uh, Friday the 13th has epitomized the slasher film. When you think of a slasher film, you think of the hockey mask. You think of the machete. Uh, you think of the telltale sound that the killer is approaching. Uh, at least two of those the mask and the machete were staples of, of two through the rest of the films. Whereas just the telltale sound of the killer approaching, that's of course that's, that's fluid throughout the entire series. Um, it sort of built the foundation for which the modern day slasher film as it's described or defined uh, is is now built upon you know your Freddy Krueger, your Michael Myers, even your your Chucky, um, you know most of those. I I I strongly feel like if Friday the Thirteenth had never existed, if any of these films did exist, they would look very different. And I think that's something we can all agree on. Yeah, how, absolutely. How, how, these There's... are important movies, and just like we were saying, how it's this is a hallmark. Yeah. of the industry. Yeah, I I love the directors in the seventies who would. They wanted to work in the exploitation vein, but they wanted to show that movies with that kind of content could actually be good films. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that they could have some kind of merit. And they proved it. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, Toby Hooper, Sean Cunningham, Wes Craven, John Carpenter, uh, they, they proved that you can make a good horror film that will appeal to the mainstream. Well, that's the thing. It, horror can be a genre, <laughs> and it, but it... That doesn't mean it has to be cheesy or stupid or bad. That's it exactly can still it. be quality. Within the film. last 12 yeah. years or so, I think we've seen that to an extent with the superhero genre. Right. Because before that, yeah, they were always a joke, and then we've gotten some that have been good movies. Yeah. Well, now, there are still some that are that are exploitive. Right. It's just like, hey, sure. you know this guy. Come watch this movie. Right. They're not good. But some of the movies have been really good because... Yeah. Like they've, Wonder Woman. Yeah, they've taken, yeah. They've taken steps in the right direction. Well, I, I think uh, comic books, the same as horror films, is that something that used to be just for the kids... You know, teens would come and see it, so you mm -hmm. just shit something out in six yeah. weeks for no budget. There were going to be some jump and they're scares. They're going to come to it anyway. Scared. Yeah, it's like the monster movies of the fifties. They're going to be terrible, yeah. but people are still going to come to it because teenagers right. love these movies. And eventually, filmmakers said, "We can do more with this. Yeah. Horror is better than this." Yeah. And and it is. There yeah. there have been excellent films just on their own right. I I often say Romero's Dawn of the Dead, nineteen seventy eight. Mm. Just a good movie, yeah. not just a good horror movie. It's flat out just a good movie. Yeah, that's what I like about Rosemary's Baby. It's just a great. It's a movie. good movie. It's a well-made film. Yeah. yeah, it's suspenseful and it's it's horror, but it's right. it's not a slasher. It, there and it doesn't it doesn't play the audience as um as as a, like with cheap tricks and no. as a joke. No. It, it doesn't take the audience for granted. It says let's let's take that's what I really it's like about paranoia the filled. Yes. The Conjuring yes. has one jump scare in it. Yeah. Like, there are moments where, like, something will kind of happen that's startling. Are you talking about that thing on yeah, the top the, of the, the witch woman? Shit, there's one moment where there's, like, a, a, a witch kind of woman on top of a yeah. wardrobe, and she, like, emerges from the dark and, like, startles yeah. you. But pretty much everything else that happens in that movie is, like, just creepy. So yeah. I, I love Excellent. a good horror slow burn. Yeah. Uh, there, the Italians are very good at that. It's ultra forty-five minutes. There's a murder. Yeah. Forty-five minutes goes by, and it's exposition leading up to it. Yeah. And then the last forty-five minutes, just a bloodbath massacre. Mm. But they do it so slowly. They set everything up to build that tension and suspense. And when is something actually going to happen? Yeah. And then they and then they smack you in the face with it. Lucio Fulci was excellent at mm. smacking you in the face with it. Yeah. He was too self-indulgent. He would linger on these images of. Guts being eaten or torn out. There's an image in uh, From Beyond, not From Beyond, The Beyond, uh, where tarantulas are eating a man's face. And that's it, not real. That it, not yeah, I know, work. I know. And it lingers forever and ever, <laughs> yeah. too. And you're just like, Dang okay, it. okay, Fulci, I yeah. get it. Yeah. You're trying to yeah. gross me out. It's fine. It's Thank you. On. Just yeah. move on. Yeah. The, the Italian it's not helping films, your story. It's just. It's not. It's just gratuitous yes. grossness, yeah. which people, there's a huge audience for that kind of stuff. 
out there though. Speaking of a huge audience and that kind of stuff out there, there are people <laughs> that listen addition. to our podcast. All and 20 of them. There's 20, man. There's 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, man. And uh, one of the relatively recent listeners yeah, is Jessica which Russo. excites me. A friend of ours. Uh, a huge Friday the 13th yeah. fan, by the way. Yes. So hopefully she's, horror film fan. Has she, is there her first listening or has she started listening to uh, other episodes? She's listened to a couple of them. Yeah. She, she basically, I think she subscribed on Facebook or liked us on Facebook yeah. and said something to us the other day and made a request so it is, it's been a long time since we've gotten to do this, but yeah. we need to award an official deckhead card. Absolutely. Jessica Russo, you are the queen of diamonds. Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations Jessica Russo. Yep. I had mentioned how much uh, Russo would enjoy this episode. I said that to Caleb, mm -hmm. who, who had left previously. Oh. And uh, he said, are you going to talk about her boobs? And I said, no, we don't have did. enough time. Okay. <laughs> we don't have enough time well, in this podcast to there's talk that. about the glorious of If she likes, if she likes horror boobs. episodes, well, every third episode is Ron's. Yeah. So there's That's quite true. a few horror <laughs> And there's, there's a lot of darkness yeah. in these episodes. You, know, we've, we've you never done know some. what he's going to do. I did one on werewolves. Jeff does dark subjects often. And yeah, I did one on but the. But they're not the, horror the, stories. Uh, they're not horror, but they're about Nazis. <laughs> I did one on Waverly Hills, which is kind yeah, of cannibalism. Hills. Yeah. Cannibalism. Yeah. yeah. You you mm. skirt the dark side, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Well, that's true. You're there. Uh, we've done murderers too. We've done murderers. Really? I did the H.H. Holmes, H. H. Holmes yeah. house. Yeah. I did the Winchester house. You yeah, did the Winchester, Winchester house, one. which is one of my favorites. So there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of good in the back back catalog. We have a catalog, guys. Yeah. We're this is 39, right? This is 40. This is 40. This is episode. Congratulations, gentlemen. Congratulations, guys. I don't have a page from last episode because I didn't actually have my book. But the one before that, I had 38 written by, so right. make this one 40. This so. is 40, 40, and we, yeah. two more, and that's season two. If we want to cut it off, because the first time we just kind of stopped doing we it. We stopped yeah. doing it for had, a while. We had a second live show. <laughs> for like, man, yeah. man, that live show. So. That was rough, man. And you guys were doing Peter, and yeah. there's all kinds of stuff. Actually, it'd be four more if we we're going to keep our seasons at yeah, 22, 22 episodes. Oh, it's 44. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, well, we'll get there. So we would love to hear <laughs> from you guys. Tell us about your least favorite part of being an adult. Yeah, absolutely. Tell or your uh, tell us your favorite slasher flick. Yeah, some slasher your stuff. Your favorite sleepaway camp, sleep sleep camp, camp yeah, which we mentioned a lot. Jessica's yeah. favorite. Um, and I'll say, oh, mention Annie. Pop, and, plug Annie at the end. Yeah. Annie auditions Monday and Tuesday, the sixteenth and seventeenth at the Hardin County Playhouse. Auditions begin at six thirty. And you have posted sides, correct? I have po I have posted. Um, Sides on the HCP website. You can look at the songs you're that we're going to be singing. You can look at the pages from the scene from the show that we're going to be reading from. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's going to be it's going to be a fantastic journey. So come Excellent. audition. Yep. I'll be there. And until next time. <laughs> Stay wild. Stay wild. And by the edge.